Congratulations on completing the previous exercise and on writing your second program to simulate a Markov chain in continuous time. In the previous two exercises, the chain that you have studied had a mixture of transient and absorbing states, and the aim was to calculate the amount of time that passes prior to absorption. In next exercise, we are going to simulate a different kind of chain. In particular, we are going to simulate the chain that is shown on this slide, which has only recurrent states and no transient states. As you learned when we studied finite time Markov chains, if a Markov chain has only recurrent states, it will often have a limiting stationary distribution. The chain shown here is no exception. Even though it is a Markov chain in continuous time, it still has a stationary distribution. The aim of this exercise is thus to extract this stationary distribution by sampling the chain. Notice that unlike in the previous exercise, we could in theory simulate this chain forever. What we will observe is that if we are initially in state 1, we will, after some period of time, transition to state 2. Then, once we have waited a little longer, we will transition back to state 1. This process of transitioning between the two states will go on ad infinitum. Obviously, we are not going to allow our program to run forever. And forever. We are instead going to limit how long it runs for by either limiting the total time we run for or by limiting the number of transitions that we simulate. In terms of working out when the transitions occur, this is relatively easy. If we start in state 1, we can work out how long we will have to wait before we observe a transition state to state 2 by generating a random variable from an exponential distribution with parameter lambda 1. Once we arrive in state 2, we can then work out how long it will be before we transition back to state 1 by generating a second random variable. This time, however, our random variable will be generated from an exponential distribution with a different parameter, namely lambda 2. Once we have arrived back in state 1, we will then generate the next time of transition by generating a random variable with an exponential from an exponential distribution with parameter lambda 1 once more. Let's suppose that the random variables that are generated from the exponential distribution with parameter lambda 1 are called y1, y2, y3, and so on. Obviously, we can generate the total time spent in state 1 by adding all these random variables together. Similarly, we can generate the total time spent in state 2 by adding all the, together all the random variables that are generated from the exponential distribution with parameter lambda 3. We can thus easily calculate the fraction of time that is spent in the two states. Furthermore, I hope that you can see how this algorithm can be extended using ideas from the previous task to us to simulate a chain with three or more different states. To prove to yourself that you do indeed understand these ideas, have a go at the next task in the block of the exercise. To do this, you are going to have to think of a three-state Markov chain with a stationary distribution. If you use a jump rate matrix with no elements that are equal to zero, and which in which in which the rows all add up to zero, you should be fine. Good luck.